Hello again. Now we're going to talk about transforming categorical data. So far we've looked at numerical data, but categorical data is a little bit of a different beast. So labels or names identify the individual characteristics of categorical variables, and they have more two or more categories. Nominal and ordinal measurement scales can represent categorical variables. Categorical variables are often known to represent less sophisticated levels of measurement, yet they're often critical, uh, they are often very critical in analyses. Think about a university investigating what majors students are interested in pursuing, or what colors are most popular for buyers of certain models of cars. But when variables take non-numerical forms, it can present some challenges in data wrangling. And transforming categorical data into numerical values is often necessary because of the limited ways to handle categorical data, even in the most sophisticated statistical software. So we also have some specifically complicated scenarios where we have to be very careful with how we work with categorical data. For example, there may be some scenarios where we have too many categories, and this can really bog down model performance and there also may be issues if some of the categories only very rarely occur. It's difficult to capture the impact of these categories accurately. We also find that if one category dominates, the variable will fail to make a positive impact since modeling success is dependent on there being some differentiation between different categories. So the idea of category reduction is to collapse some categories to create fewer non-overlapping categories. And we're going to walk through an example of that in R in just a few moments. Choosing the right number of categories depends on the data, the context, and the disciplinary norms. But we have some general guidelines. We know that categories with few observations may be combined to create an other category. And this enables a critical mass to be created to help reveal patterns and relationships in data. We also know that categories with similar impacts are often easier to work with when they're combined because it can be difficult for our statistical software to understand the differences between these very mildly or discreetly different categories. So now we're going to open up our studio and we are going to combine some categorical data. So here we are in our studio. I've loaded up the customer's data and let's take a look at the distribution of customers in our various categories for race. We can do this using the table function. So here we can see our different categories of race and we have two that are have a specific a, a very low number of respondents, American Indian and Pacific Islander. It can be tricky when you're working with sensitive categories like race, sexual orientation, uh, categories related to health status or other sensitive topics. But sometimes for the purpose of analytics, it can be very helpful to combine categories. So to demonstrate this as an example, we're going to combine some of our categories here in the race category. And we note that American Indian and Pacific Islander have the fewest observations. So now we want to go ahead and create a variable called new race using the if else function. And what we're going to do with this code is combine American Indian and Pacific Islander to instead of identify specifically and individually as American Indian or Pacific Islander to be identified as other. So we're going to create this new object in the customer's data set called new race. 
We're going to use the if else function. We're going to do customers race. And then we're going to use this function here with the percentage signs and in. And what we're basically saying is that if an observation has one of the following titles, we want to replace it with the word other, but we want to leave everything else alone. So then C, this tells, that, tells our studio which items we want to rename. And in this case, it's going to be American Indian and Pacific Islander. And these will be renamed other in the new race variable. And then this is just so that the other items in the original race variable, that we leave them alone. So how do we know that this has happened? Well, we can go over and see our new race and scroll through and see how many others we see versus uh, American Indian and Pacific Islander. We can also use that table function again. Table, customers, new race. And here we see that we have 15 who identify as Asian, 57 who identify as Black, 41 who identify as Hispanic, 8 who identify as Other, and 79 who identify as White. So that condenses our categories a little bit and may make it easier to conduct the analysis. Another type of transformation of categorical data that may come in handy are dummy or indicator or binary variables. And these are commonly used to describe two categories of a variable. It assumes a value of one for one of the categories and zero for the other category, which is the reference category. It's important to note that dummy variables do not imply rank. They are simply zeros and ones. They are instead intended to indicate the presence or lack thereof of a specific state. And all interpretations of results are made in reference to that reference category. And often we have categorical variables that are defined by more than two categories. So given k categories of a variable, the general rule is to create k minus one dummy variables considering the last or omitted category as a reference. And we do this because if we created dummy variables for all of our categories and then we put them in a, a model all together, we would end up with a scenario called multicollinearity, and that is a problem that we would really prefer not to deal with. And we'll discuss it a little bit more in class. So we're going to hop on over to our studio and create some dummy variables of our channel categories. And this is the code that we'll use to do that. And keep in mind what that reference category is going to look like as we explore this. So channel refers to the way in which individuals were referred to the store. So let's take a quick peek and see what our categories are using the table function. So we have referral, which means a person to person referral, SM for social media, TV for television advertisements, and web for web-based advertising. So now we're going to create k minus 1 dummy variables of our channel categories. And keep in mind as we create these categories, what is our reference category? So first, let's create the channel underscore referral variable. And in this case here, if they 
the customer was referred with a personal referral, we want it to be equal to one and zero otherwise. And if we scroll over here, we see channel referral, and then we see here in this row that we had uh, one person who was referred individually, and we see a few more ones as we scroll down the list. And we're going to repeat this for social media. Again, we have another set of dummy variables. Looks like we have a few more with social media there. And again, we'll do it with TV. So now we have K minus one dummy variables. Our reference category here is web. Generally, unless there's a specific reason to do it otherwise, our reference category is generally going to be the category with the greatest number of observations because this is the reference. This is the baseline by which we evaluate uh, our dummy variables. There are also scenarios where you may want to create category scores, which are appropriate if data are ordinal and have natural ordered categories. This enables categorical variables to be treated as numerical variables in certain analytical models uh, and spares us from having to convert a, a categorical variable into several dummy variables or it reduces the number of categories that we have to work with. And that can be really handy, especially if we're working with data that's like a Likert scale type data. So for example, in customer satisfaction surveys, they often use ordinal scales such as very dissatisfied, somewhat dissatisfied, neutral, somewhat satisfied, and very satisfied to indicate the level of satisfaction. And we can recode these categories numerically using numbers one through five. And we just so happen to have a satisfaction variable in our data set. It is called satisfaction and it uses the scale that we just described. And we can use the if else function to create these numerically based categories. And remember, string variables or categorical variables that use words can be very challenging to work with in some statistical packages. So it can be a lot easier to evaluate these variables if we can somehow convert them to some type of numeric structure. So the code seems kind of intense, but what we're basically doing is creating a new variable called satisfaction score. And we're saying that if they are very dissatisfied, they, their value should be equal to one. If they are somewhat dissatisfied, it would be equal to a two. If they're neutral, a three. Somewhat satisfied, a four. And if they don't fall into any of those categories, their value is going to be a five. And now I'm gonna scroll over and we see that the satisfaction score is now numerical. And we can compare the satisfaction score with the satisfaction variable itself. So for example, in this first row, the satisfaction level was very dissatisfied and the satisfaction score was a one. So one other thing that I think is pretty cool is we can use the summary function to take a look at this variable. So customers, satisfaction score, and we can see the minimum, the maximum, but we can also see the median and the mean. So our median satisfaction score is a four out of five, so very satisfied, and or satisfied, uh, somewhat satisfied, and our mean is 3.745, so still better than neutral. And that tells us just a little bit of useful information about how satisfied our customers are and we can apply this approach in other data sets as well. So that's a wrap on transforming categorical data. 
Thanks for sticking around, and we'll catch you next time.